Hello, Big Show Nerds. Thank you once again for joining me on your Nerd News Headlines. I, as always, am Dustin, bringing you the headlines, and we've got, a, we've honestly got a huge episode. So I, I, I mean, we've got uh, an update on Hellraiser TV series, the Orville, uh, Goosebumps is coming back to television. We've got, honestly, the smallest section is the rumor mill. So let's get into the intro so we can get into the news. Real quick, before we get into the news, there is a slight issue of housekeeping. Uh, Monday, May the 4th, a.k.a. Star Wars Day, a.k.a. My girlfriend's birthday, there will actually not be a nerd news update. I will be taking the day off because of the aforementioned birthday and doing the things that are required of a boyfriend on the birthday. So that being said, we will only have one episode next week. That out of the way, let's get into the news. Let's talk... TV streaming. So first up in TV streaming, we have uh, something of an update. I can't remember how long ago it was that we talked about this, but uh, Hellraiser, the series, the TV series that is going to HBO Max, uh, they just landed a director for the pilot and presumably a couple other episodes for the first season in David Gordon Green, who is currently doing the Halloween movies and did the Halloween reboot. Uh, And this also is not a reboot of this of the franchise this series this is existing inside of the already existing franchise but also somehow has nothing to do with the new movie that's in the works so maybe the new movie is a reboot or a retelling of some sort and that's why I, it's very interesting that the two won't be connected but the series is connected to the other movie. I don't know. It's, it's hmm. the, the legality of making movies and things in Hollywood is a little bonkers. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so that's really awesome though. That is all we have there. So we're moving next over to the Orville and we just got word from Jonathan Frakes. Uh, actually we got a couple of things from Jonathan Frakes in an interview that he did with, I believe it was with comicbook.com. Yes. Uh, with comicbook.com, Jonathan Frakes, said that he wants to be in season three of the Orville, which is which is really awesome, though not generally the kind of news we cover here on the show. There is more to this, though. Uh, he also said in the same interview that he will not be directing. He has directed a couple of episodes in the past, one from season one, I believe it was episode five, and one from season two, I believe was episode eight. Uh, he is a very well-experienced, uh, well-seasoned director. He's done some Star Trek stuff. He's directed quite quite a bit. He's lent his voice to some some animation and such, so he is kind of a nerd staple at this point. Uh, But he said that he will not be directing anything in season three because they made the decision to only stick with two directors for the season. Those two directors are going to be, and the first one's kind of obvious, Seth MacFarlane. Uh, He is producer, star, writer, just all around. He is the Orville. But also John Kassar, who is also a producer on the show and has directed a number of episodes in the past as well. Uh, They will be directing all of the episodes for season three. And just a reminder, season three will be exclusively on Hulu. So if you don't have a subscription because you, for whatever reason, don't have a Disney Plus subscription, which you're like one of two people in the world, then you should probably do that because... It's it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so great. If you like Star Trek, then this is the Star Trek that never was. And uh it it's it's I don't know how to it, it, if you like Star Trek, you'll like The Orville. If you haven't watched The Orville yet, then you really probably should. Uh so that's what we've ha- with that, that's what we have for that piece. Now we're moving next into Frasier, which is again not normally something we talk about on the show, but I am a huge Frasier Frasier head. Uh I love I've I've seen probably every episode at least a half a dozen times. Um and so we just got an announcement because there was a reunion in the works before for everything shut down. We just got an, an announcement from Perry Gilpin, who played Roz on the show, uh, that the reunion is still in the works in spite of all of the uh, coronavirus shutdown stuff. 
it, no news as to how it's been set back because of the coronavirus. She just said, don't worry, it's still coming. So real quickie update there. And then our final piece in TV streaming has to do with Goosebumps. We are getting a new Goosebumps series uh, over uh, somewhere on Sony television. It hasn't been announced exactly where Sony is going to put it out, which platform they're going to release it on. But we are getting a new Goosebumps series uh, from the producer that gave us the two movies that starred Jack Black, Neil M. Moritz. He will be turning the $2 billion franchise into another TV series. This will be the second time that this property has been turned into a TV series. What remains to be seen and what's kind of still up in the air is exactly how this TV series is going, what kind of TV series it's going to be, I guess. Because the movies, again, starring Jack Black, just kind of mashed everything together and and wasn't really any one particular story told by R.L. Stein, but it was more about R.L. Stein in a fictitious way. Whereas the original series from the 90s, that the Goosebumps series, was much more like the Are You Afraid of the Dark series in that it was anthological, so each episode was a standalone story. And R.L. Stein himself kind of stood in and, and opened each episode, much like Rod Serling did for The Twilight Zone. I would be surprised if, this ser if the TV series turned out to be more like the movies and less like the original TV series. I, I honestly anticipate this going to be another anthology series and also very likely going to be released. Uh, if it's Sony doing it, I don't know what their output is. Netflix? Netflix, maybe, I think is their streaming output. They don't have their own streaming service yet, but I'm sure that's only a matter of time. Uh, that is all we have in TV streaming. So let's move now to movies. We got a new update on Matrix 4. Yes, it is still in development. Uh, Matrix 4, we will not be seeing Joe Pantoliano as Cypher in the new movie. Apparently, he has been asking Lana Wachowski to let him in the movie for some time, and it has been... He He's been getting stonewalled. She hasn't responded to him in any shape or fashion. Uh, so needless to say, that's a very strong indication. Not to say that it's 100% for sure at this point, because I'm sure there's still a little bit of wiggle room, but they are in the middle of production and they just kind of had to shut down for COVID. So uh, very likely, I guess I should say, not going to see John Pantoliano or Joe Pantoliano, sorry, Joe Pantoliano as Cypher in the new Matrix movie. That's all we have there. So we're moving now into Silver Sable and Black Cat, the silver and black movie that we've been keeping tabs on ever since it was announced two years ago. Uh, that movie is now, it seems, not happening at all. So for a while it was going to be silver and black and then they split it up and they said, well, these two characters are strong enough. We could give them each their own movie. And now Gina Prince by the wood, who is the director and I believe writer or no, she is the writer, and I believe she's also the director, maybe. Uh, she it was quoted in an interview saying recently that it is not going to be happening at all, and if it does happen, then it's possibly going to become a series on some TV streaming app. Uh, that is all we have there. Now we're going to move, staying on the Sony side of things, kind of, we're moving into a new Disney MCU update as far as the release dates go, because Sony just announced their Spider-Man release dates, and that has forced Marvel to move some of their release dates. So we're just going to go through these real quick, and then we'll kind of... Uh, get in a little bit more detail. We have Spider-Man 3 has been announced as November 5th, 2021, which means they had to move Doctor Strange to March 25th of 2022. And then Thor 4 into February 11th of 2022. And the new Spider-Verse movie was also announced by Sony is now October 7th of 2022. That one's kind of inconsequential to the MCU at large, but it's still significant to talk about. They've, they announced a number of other ones too, but these were just the most significant. Uh, now, the, because of this, like I said, they had to move Thor and they had to move Doctor Strange. Now Doctor Strange is going to be the end of Phase 4, whereas Thor used to be the end of Phase 4. Uh, this is this is a lot of movement, man, and and it's because Sony did this announcement because I can't I didn't write down the original release dates and I apologize, but there it was a few months worth of 
even more pushbacks. And so the, the Feige's phase four is getting a little tweaked, man. Interesting though, having Doctor Strange be the end of phase four because of all the rumors surrounding all of the introductions to characters we are theoretically going to be getting in that movie. It kind of sets up an interesting place for phase five to begin. And then if Thor... Uh, Thor actually was would be before it because it's in February and Doctor Strange is in March. Either way, uh, just do having Doctor Strange be the end of Phase 4 just sets up a very interesting beginning for Phase 5. So very likely that will be our introduction to mutants. It will be the beginning of Phase 5 because we'll get teased at the end of Phase 4 would be my bet. And now we have our final piece in movies and that has to do with YouTube. So YouTube just announced that they are, be go they are going to be doing a digital film festival on their platform. Uh, not to be outdone by Amazon, who just teamed up with South by Southwest's film festival. YouTube teamed up with 20 other film festivals that are not going to be happening because of lockdown, because of coronavirus lockdowns. Uh, one of the 20 is Cannes. The Cannes Film Festival will be in some way digital. Uh, the, it's going to be a 10-day event on YouTube. Uh, the name of the channel is going to be We Are One Global Film Festival. That's, that's the name of the film festival and also name of the channel. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's going to be 10 days long, starting May 29th and going for 10 days from there. Uh, it, it's just uh, Sundance, Tribeca, like every huge film festival is partnering with YouTube in order to go digital. Uh, again, I don't know exactly how it's going to be laid out. I don't think anybody really knows how it's going to be laid out, but it is going to be 100% free to everyone in the world who has a YouTube account and is also going to be commercial free. So it will not have ad breaks in any of the films that you can watch for this film festival, which is freaking significant, man. I like we're getting so much awesome stuff. I part of me still is like, maybe we could stand to be locked down a little longer, but that's I'm that's I am in a much more comfortable place than most people because I am still working during the lockdown. So I, I, I only say that because we are getting great content, not because I want people to not have jobs. Uh, but yes, that is everything in movies. Let's talk some rumors, guys. All right. Uh, we have Guardian Devil, Kevin Smith's epic book is getting teased to potentially be getting a sequel. Uh, Kevin Smith is being super tight-lipped about it, though he has kind of sort of said a couple of things, but the biggest pieces have been coming from Joe Quesada, who is the artist on the book. Uh, he's He's been taking to his socials. Actually, he talked to Kevin Smith on his YouTube channel, and so there's there's been a lot of rumblings and a lot of really interesting stuff. We might be getting a sequel to uh, Guardian Devil, which could be uh, I really, Kevin Smith's writing is actually really hit and miss, though this book is easily one of the best Daredevil books, let alone one of the best Kevin Smith books. Uh, so next we're talking about Bright 2, the movie that got a sequel immediately after it went to Netflix, even though it got largely panned by almost everybody who saw it. It wasn't a great movie. It wasn't terrible, though. Like, I don't understand why it gets as much hate as it does, but it wasn't great either. It is uh, now reportedly looking to cast Angelina Jolie as the villain for their sequel, again, to 2017's probably most panned movie. Uh, though, again, I didn't have a huge issue with it. It just wasn't... It wasn't anything special, I guess. Uh, anyway, so that's that's what we have there. And now we're moving over to Guardians of the Galaxy Vol Volume 3. Uh, and this rumor is kind of big because it would put uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, on screen alongside Sylvester Stallone. Uh, it looks like James Gunn is trying to bring in Arnold Schwarzenegger as one of the Ravagers for Volume 3, which could be kind of awesome, but I would imagine it would just be a real quick, like, two-minute screen time cameo. Uh, that's all we have on that one. And our last rumor, like I said, rumor section, kind of small this episode, uh, last rumor is The Batman. Uh, the rumor actually is multi-layered because it's saying that the Flash movie is not only... 
Or, I, uh, let me rephrase that. Not only are we getting the Flash movie is going to be re retconning a lot of things, but one of those things specifically, and we've talked about this in the rumor section uh, at least once or twice before, specifically one of the things getting retconned is the death of the Black Mask from Harley Quinn. Because they want to put Black Mask in Batman movies going forward. And how can they do that if he's dead? And again, re because this is the rumor, then it is also presumed that this version of the Black Mask will be Ewan McGregor's version that we saw in the Harley Quinn movie. So I can kind of get behind that. I would like to see what they can do with this very unique version of the Black Mask. He's definitely not the version of the Black Mask that you ever read in the comic books. Not even kind of the same guy, but uh, not a bad villain nonetheless. So if this one is true, then I'm kind of interested. My interest is peaked, let's say. But that's all we've got for rumors, guys. That does it for this episode of Headlines, Nerds. For a more in-depth conversation on these nerdy bits, plus much more nerdy action, including the full news show, then you can join me over on my personal YouTube channel, Generally Nerdy, where we do reaction videos to popular music and Comic-Con coverage and all of the nerdy stuff happens over on Jelly Nerdy, so j join me over there. While you're here, though, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all of the Big Show Entertainment Media platforms, including the YouTube, very, very specifically, because we are having that drawing for a PS4 Pro once we hit a thousand subscribers. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to tune in next time for all that's happening across the nerd world. Thank you.